What's up guys, Randomness Reviews here with you again. We're gonna be taking another look at a military surplus rifle unboxing today. I just got this box in from Royal Tiger Imports. Of course, they are the company that is selling all of the firearms that are being imported from Ethiopia by interordinance. I've ordered a couple things from them in the past and I've had good luck, although some people have reported having issues with their firearms up until this point. I've had a pretty decent experience. So we have the box here. It's actually a relatively small box in comparison to some of the ones I've looked at. Some of you might have noticed the bayonet that I had in the frame there. This is an Italian bayonet. However, it is not a Carcano bayonet. It is a Vetterly bayonet. It has gone through several conversions. Initially, this bayonet would have been much longer than it is now. Uh, the bayonet was cut down at some point, the sheath was cut down at some point. To go along with the conversion process of the Vetterly rifles as they went through their iterations, this bayonet was made by Torino, and I figured it would be the perfect implement to use in opening this box. This box actually came in good shape for a change. This one was shipped by FedEx, and they actually didn't beat it all to heck, so that was good. All right, pop that open. Looks like we're coming out barrel in first. I don't think we're gonna need our bayonet anymore, so put that away. All right, so we have the rifle here, wrapped in bubble wrap per usual. The buttstock is exposed, but the rest of the rifle is bubble wrapped. Let's unroll this. There she is. Yes, indeed, we have another Carcano rifle. Give a quick safety check on this just to make sure everything's good. Chamber is empty. This, my friends, is a Fusili Modelo 1891 Carcano, the Carcano Long Rifle. Recently, I've added quite a few Carcanos to my collection because they are currently being imported from both Ethiopia and Italy. The ones that I've added to my collection so far, though, have been carbines, where this one is actually a proper full-length rifle. I've been watching these on Royal Tiger Imports' website ever since the website came up. And I always thought they were a little bit overpriced at $400, but recently they had a couple price reductions. Although you are always rolling the dice with firearms of this nature when you're buying sight unseen, it might not be in the condition that you would want it to be, but there's really not much you can do about that. These rifles have been in service for an extremely long time in Ethiopia. I mean, they have been through it and they show that wear for sure. There's our manufacturer marking. It looks like it is a Tyranny rifle. Dated 1917, so we have a nice World War I date there. Uh, there's our serial number. The serial number I can see right away on the bolt is non-matching, unfortunately. As far as overall condition goes, the metal finish is very worn. Down here on the magazine especially, it is uh, quite light and in the white. Most of the bluing is gone on all the metal surfaces. But I don't see any heavy pitting or serious rust or anything. That's not too bad. Looks like we do have a cleaning rod. That's always a bonus. I love having those included. A regular inline bayonet lug. I need to get myself a Carcano bayonet at some point. I don't have one for my collection yet. This is sort of an interesting addition to the rifle here. It looks like a piece of an old sling. It is some super dried up leather of some sort. It almost looks like one of those rawhide dog chews. It's so dry. Uh, the rest of it is broke off. It looks like that's all that remains of it. Now we do have a crack here in the handguard under the barrel band. In general, this upper handguard is looking sort of funny. Of the examples of this rifle that I've seen in the past, there was more wood towards the end here. This one sort of seems sanded down or filed off, or maybe it just wore off from heavy use and handling. I'm not really quite sure about that, but that looks a little weird to me. Just this whole front handguard seems really thin. Like it's been really worn a lot. It has a crack running through it there. Almost every Carcano I've encountered has a crack in this portion of the handguard. It's just very thin wood, and I guess they just don't hold up to recoil over the years. So far on the stock, that's the most serious blemish I've seen so far, which isn't too bad at all. We do have a wrist crack. These do always worry me because they can get worse under shooting. That's a high recoil absorption area. And that's why those cracks start forming there in the first place. Butt pad looks good. There's a few cracks right at the end of the buttstock here, but usually those types of cracks are just cosmetic. And we have our rear sling swivel here. Now it 
is heavily rusted. It's rusted so bad, in fact, that I can't actually get it to fold down. This should swing freely and it is completely locked up, so I have to try to remedy that. The action screws seem to have a little bit of rust around those. The bolt itself is extremely sticky feeling. It's quite dirty. I'm sure under the wood of this rifle is probably gonna be really dirty. I'll insert some pictures of that for you right here. But for the condition that I expect from a Royal Tiger Imports firearm, I mean, this seems pretty decent. Let's do the old muzzle test with a bullet here. This is a 6.5 Carcano round, which is what this rifle is chambered in. And we'll see how deeply that goes into the muzzle here. Uh-oh. It completely eats it. All right, so that should not happen. If your bore is good on one of these rifles, it should stop probably right about there, right where it hits the rifling. This bore completely eats it. So that's not a good sign. I'm expecting the bore on this rifle to be pretty rough. From the other examples I've seen out of this lot, the long rifles seem to have the worst of the bores, probably because they were used the most. I'll go ahead and insert pictures of before and after cleaning and we'll see what it actually looks like in there, but I am most definitely not expecting very much. I mean, that's not a good sign right there. The Fasili Modelo 1891 Carcano began production at the Terni factory in Italy in 1892. Five other arsenals will go on to produce the rifle off and on up until 1918 and the end of World War I. The Terni factory actually continued very limited production all the way through 1936 to replace rifles that were in service. During that time, a lot of these long rifles were converted to the short rifle configuration to match the TS carbine. I have a video of unboxing one of those. If you wanna see that, I'll post it right here for you. The last of the Fusili 1891s to be made were pr actually produced by Beretta. And those were made from about 1936 to the very early 1940s, 1940, 1941, something like that in very low numbers. This is the quintessential Carcano rifle. It has the action that was developed by Salvatore Carcano. The bolt was originally designed to be implemented on a black powder rifle. However, with the advent of smokeless powder, they did place it into that role. This same action that, that this rifle is using went on to be used in every Carcano rifle that the Italian military put into service all the way from the late 1800s through Italian capitulation in World War II. They are almost all completely interchangeable. Some bolt handles are turned down, some are straight, but other than that, the bolts are pretty much the same on all those rifles. Very characteristic of the Carcano rifle is also the American style clip loading. I've went over this a couple of times in the past with some of those other unboxings, but this is a clip fed rifle. I have a clip here of actual original 6.5 Carcano ammo, and this whole clip fits down into the action. The whole thing goes in there and allows for pretty quick loading, although these clips can be finicky, especially nowadays when they have years and years of service on them. So it can be a little bit sticky, but I'm sure on a brand new fresh rifle and brand new fresh clips that that was a very good way to load your rifle. The Fusili Modelo 1891 rifle would be the primary infantry rifle of the Italian army for all of World War I, and they stayed in common use during the interwar period and saw pretty extensive service in World War II as well. These rifles stuck around for a long time. This particular batch made its way to Ethiopia, probably just prior to World War II or during World War II. And they hung around there until the Italians were pushed out. And that's where they've been ever since the end of the war, up until here recently when they were imported here to the US. So there's no telling what kind of small conflicts these have seen in Africa. I mean, obviously they have substantial wear. If the bore is as bad as I think it's gonna be in this rifle, I'm sure it's been shot a ton. Speaking of the bore, this rifle debuted the Gain Twist rifling that the Italians chose to use in their Carcanos. It is a progressive rifled bore, so it spins the bullet up slowly, supposedly reducing wear on the barrel itself and extending the barrel life. You will see that same progressive rifle bore in all Carcano rifles until you reach the model 1938 in which they did away with the Gain Twist rifling. This rifle actually feels super handy for its size. I mean, it is a full length long rifle. The overall length on this is just over 50 inches. It has a full length rifle barrel, just shy of 31 inches. In most rifles of this length, they'll come in at nine or 10 pounds sometimes. 
This one is coming in at just about eight pounds. The forend up here is extremely thin. It's made it this long without any brakes, so I guess it's pretty durable too, but this is a very slick firearm actually. Our rear sight in standard Carcano fashion folds all the way forward and recesses into the handguard to give you your battle sight. That will be a 300 meter battle sight when it's flipped forward like that. If you return it to the rear position and lay it down flat, that is a 450 meter sight. And when you actually start using the adjustments here, the very first notch is 600 meters. And that is adjustable all the way to a very generous 2000 meters. In total between 2.5 and 3 million of these long rifles were produced from six or seven factories in the course of its production. And I really don't think any Carcano collection is complete without this particular rifle. I'm glad to finally have one in my collection, although I am worried about the bore of this particular rifle. I mean, it is worn, but it is what I was expecting. You have to know what to expect when you're rolling the dice on something from Royal Tiger Imports, because those rifles have not been stored in good conditions and they've all seen very heavy use and you're going to get some rifles that look like this on the outside. It's all about going into those purchases with the correct expectations. If you're expecting some awesome, beautifully blued showpiece with a mirror polished bore and you think you're going to get that for $300, mm, it's not going to happen, guys. If you don't mind having a rifle that shows that it's been out there, drugged through the mud and blood, then the stuff from Royal Tiger Imports isn't looking too bad. Thanks so much guys for checking the video out. I really do appreciate it. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up. I'll have more firearms unboxings like this coming in the future. So if you like that kind of thing, sub to the channel. If you noticed anything about this rifle that I didn't talk about, let me know down in the comments. I'm not an expert and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.